So right here, I have the new S22 Ultra. This phone is actually quite a bit different from Samsung's last gen Ultra phone. It still has the typical Ultra features, like these amazing cameras, but now it also has some Samsung Note features with this more squared off design, and also of course, the S Pen. It was super interesting for me to explore everything that the S Pen can do, and also the capability of the cameras. This phone really does stand out in quite a few ways. So here are the 10 most interesting and unique features of the S22 Ultra that you'll almost never see elsewhere. All right, so the S Pen really is packed full of features. Some are more just for fun, but others are legitimately very useful. So the first feature is that even when the screen is off, you can still pull out the S Pen and then just start writing on the screen. It's a black background and you can make the pen any of these neon colors. Now, I think this feature is really cool and it can also be useful for when you need to just quickly jot down something. You don't even need to unlock the phone for it. And when you're done, you can save this to Samsung Notes, but if you want to be absolutely sure that you're reminded of what you wrote, you can even pin it to your always on display. And when the reminder is no longer useful, you can just double tap on the X there to delete it. But if you have the phone unlocked and want to quickly create a note, then just hold down on the S Pen's button and then double tap on the screen. Another way to do this is to tap on the floating pen icon, which pulls up the panel of S Pen features, and then just press on create note. So this essentially just pulls up the Samsung Notes app as a pop-up window, which you can resize and then place anywhere. This is quite useful for when you want to take notes on something that you're reading on your phone because the pop-up window will not cover it. And you can also very quickly minimize this entire window into a floating icon. And the S Pen actually feels really natural to write with. It has these flat edges, which I don't really find as comfortable as rounded edges, but holding the S Pen overall still feels pretty good. Now, the pen actually tracks perfectly in Samsung Notes. There's basically no latency at all, so I have very precise control, and I would say I can write as fast and well on this screen as I do on regular paper. And the Samsung Notes app is pretty feature-rich too. There's a bunch of different pen options. You can select things and then also add images or PDFs and switch between typing and writing all very seamlessly. I love how feature-rich Samsung Notes is, and I would definitely use it more, but the downside is that it's not a broadly available app. Even on a generic Windows device, you have to jump through a bunch of hoops to get it working, so it's really only readily available on Samsung devices. Now, if you want to use a note-taking app that's more broadly available, I would recommend going with Microsoft OneNote. It syncs across all platforms, including its web version. But do note that despite the speedy response of the pen, some third-party apps like OneNote still suffer from quite a bit of latency. I think it's still pretty usable though, it's not too bad. Now, the cameras on this phone are also pretty impressive. There's a 108 megapixel main camera. The camera app doesn't default to using all of the pixels, but you can very easily select to use it. And as you can see, the 108 megapixel mode photo really does show more detail. The texture here looks more refined and cleaner compared to the regular mode photo on the Samsung, and also the iPhone's photo from its 12 megapixel main camera. There's also an ultra wide lens and a telephoto lens with three times optical zoom on the S22 Ultra, but it actually has a second telephoto lens with 10 times optical zoom. Most phones, including the iPhone 13 Pro and also the regular S22s, just have one telephoto lens with three times optical zoom. And again, you can definitely see the difference. At 10 times zoom, the Samsung photo still looks pretty clean. There's a bit of noise here, but the text is very clean. The iPhone's photo, by comparison, looks a lot worse with a lot more noise and the text looks smeared almost. So yeah, the 10 times optical zoom is quite impressive and it can certainly be useful for reading far away signs. It's kind of like having a little telescope in your pocket. All right, and back to the S Pen. So it can also do air actions, which is basically when you hold down on the pen button and then do an action like this or like this. The air actions in the camera app are definitely very useful. I can take a photo or record a video and also switch between the modes all hands-free. And this can certainly make taking photos a lot easier. Now, the air actions are also pretty nice in media apps like YouTube and Spotify. I can use them to play or pause, skip to the next track, and also control the volume up or down. And if you go into the S Pen settings, you can see all of the apps that support air actions. And you can also decide what each action does in each 
app. Now, to be honest, I really only occasionally use the Air Actions in the camera and media apps because in general, Air actions are a lot slower than just doing it generically with my hands, and they're not extremely reliable either. Okay, so if you ever want to blur something out in a photo or a video, or just draw on it, you can in the gallery. So just tap on the pen icon and then the smiley face. This one is a blur tool. You can adjust it however you want. There's also a few different highlighter and pen options as well. This feature is available on other Samsung phones too, but I feel like it's even more useful on the S22 Ultra because you can get a lot more precise with the S Pen. And for blurring or drawing on a screenshot specifically, you can use Smart Select or ScreenWrite. Both of them are in this S Pen panel. So with the Smart Select tool, you can select a portion of the screen with a circle or a square or freeform. And with the ScreenWrite tool, you take a screenshot of the entire screen. And if it's a long article, you can even use scroll capture to get the entire thing as one screenshot. And then on both tools, you can draw on the screenshot or blur things out. Now, this is especially nice with the S Pen because now I can draw nice diagrams to illustrate a point or just write little reminder notes on the screenshot. I definitely find this feature super useful. It allows me to add context to the screenshots so that later on, I can better remember why I took it in the first place. And also in the S Pen panel is the option to write on the Samsung calendar. This kind of brings back old school vibes, which is kind of ironic since this is such a brand new product. I wouldn't say this feature is particularly useful, but it's fun and even a little bit nostalgic to like circle things on the calendar. And note that while Samsung Notes can sync with Google Calendar, these pen drawings unfortunately won't be synced. Okay, and there's also the Translate feature in the S Pen panel. It's powered by Google Translate. All you need to do is hover the S Pen over the text. You can translate whole paragraphs or just individual words, and it's pretty fast. So yeah, those are some of the most interesting features in the S Pen panel. Now, there's also the S Pen to Text feature. You can enable or disable this in the settings. This is probably not very useful for writing English words because it's usually not faster to write than to type, but maybe for some other languages, such as Mandarin, it might be faster to write than to type. All right, and the last one is that if you do write a lot of things on this phone, you can actually get a nicer and larger S Pen to use. You do have to toggle on allow multiple S Pens in the settings, but after that, you can just leave the included S Pen in its little holster and use other S Pens to write on the Ultra. So yeah, those are all of the features that I found to be the most interesting and unique on the S22 Ultra. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and also let me know down below which one of these features was the most interesting to you. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. These are the rest of my social medias, so feel free to follow me on those other platforms. And I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.